welcome back to my channel and if you're new here my name is Christina Kent and I'm an oil painter based out of San Francisco. Today I'm going to give you a tour of my drawings and paintings for my most recent sketchbook. So let's check it out. So let's take a look at what's in my April 2022 to November 2022 sketchbook. So here are some sketches that I did of my cat Luna um, while she was just sleeping on my bed. I thought she was super sweet and I mostly wanted to focus on the light and dark contrast between the black on her face and back and the white on her stomach and just the nice designs that that was creating. Um, here is a copy of a self-portrait of an artist that I really like named um, Caroline Jia. She just does these beautiful portraits and so I wanted to uh, try to copy what is she actually did a painting this wasn't a drawing um, but I wanted to do a drawing based off of her painting to get an idea of the shapes that she was creating in her hair and in the shadows which I found really informative. Here's another drawing of my cat Luna once again focusing on the light and dark contrast. Here are two master copies of a painter I really like named Adam Cohn. Um, and he did these beautiful cityscapes of Tel Aviv. And I just really like the way that he simplified the shapes of the city while still capturing the feeling of the city without painting all of the exact details. And that's something recently when I've been doing San Francisco cityscapes, it's been something that I've been working on in my own work. Here's a painting of a rose I did, um, and all the paintings in this sketchbook are in acrylic gouache. Um, and I wanted to also kind of simplify the shapes that were going on in the leaves, which I think I did really well here, um, and then have a lot of contrast and warmth in the color of the rose. And then here I did a drawing of a similar rose, just trying to break it down into shapes in graphite. Um, here are some quick self-portrait contour line drawings. And then here's a self-portrait. I think this was from life, but I'm not entirely sure. Um, but yeah, I've been practicing a lot of self-portraits, as you may know. Um, and it's always good to practice them both in my drawings and in my paintings. Here's a drawing I did of a really cute coffee truck um, that's in San Francisco at Alamo Square Park. Um, I just really like the shape of the truck and the contrast between the highlights on the top part of the truck and then the part that was in shadow. And I really like these kind of purpley blue and green colors that I was seeing in the shadow. It's a gray truck, but it's really cool, like all of the, the different colors that you can find within the grays. And then here are two quick landscape studies I did of California. Um, I really like doing these smaller studies because it helps me get an idea of how the composition of an overall painting will feel and also um, play with the colors, um, get colors that I like, get a color palette that, that seems to work well. Um, these are both in the Marin Headlands and this one I turned into a larger painting. Um, this one I haven't but, but might in the future. Um, and then here are two cityscapes I was working on. Um, just trying to do the studies in graphite, focusing on the, the difference in values, so getting the darkest darks, then the medium values and the lighter values, and simplifying the shapes of the very complex buildings that I was seeing. Here's a drawing I did. I think it was a photo that I just found on Instagram that I really liked. I, <laughs> Barad says that she kind of looks like someone from Harry Potter, which I also love that. Um, and I just wanted to capture this kind of dreamy mood. And then here's another master copy I did. Um, this is from work by the painter Carlos San Mian. I think it's Mian. Um, and he just captures light in the most beautiful way. Like I loved, it's a, like a interior scene. So light's coming through this, this door that has these big windows and then hitting some objects in the foreground. And it's very abstract, which I really like about his work, um, but you still get a really strong sense of light. And so I was trying to learn that in doing this study of his painting. Here's a study, uh, oh, I think I wrote who it was. Oh yeah, uh, Dagnan Bouvere, uh, I think is how you say his name. Um, he did a lot of paintings of these women 
uh, I think they're like religious women wearing these very interesting um, sort of hats. Um, and it's created a really cool light dark contrast. So I wanted to, to draw that. I really liked the different shapes that was showing up. This is just a portion of a larger painting of his. Um, and then here's another self portrait I was doing. Here is playing with like these transparent layers of color and then the very opaque layer of red. And I really liked the drawing, so I was letting it show through and I liked the contrast of the drawing and the blue seeming very transparent and the red being very opaque. Here's a master copy of a painter I really like named Sainer Edom. Um, Sainer Edom is part of a bunch of artists who do these amazing murals, I think mostly in Europe. Um, and yeah, I really like the simplicity of this scene and the purple and orange contrast. I think the color palette is just really, really interesting. Um, and then you've got some cool dark shapes and just an overall really nice composition. So I wanted to study that. And then here's a painting of my partner, Berad. Um, it was like a really bright sunny day in San Francisco and we were sitting at a table and the light was reflecting off of the table onto his face and I just thought it casts just such a beautiful glow. Here's a drawing study I did uh, of a drawing by Daria Musienko and um, here I've been doing a lot of paintings recently and so with this I really wanted to practice my drawing skills and I love how Musienko uses um, line to create just very compelling images. So that was the goal with this drawing. And then here's a drawing that I did in Wildcat Campground in Point Reyes. Here's a painting. Um, this was supposed to be an abstract landscape painting, um, but it turned into m more of a regular landscape painting. Um, but I still think the colors and the composition are pretty fun. And then here's a, another self-portrait I did. So I've still been doing a lot of these regular self-portraits. Um, and the more I do them, the more I wanna play around with colors and shapes and compositions. So here I'm really playing with the blue-orange contrast. And then um, this sketch I later turned into a larger painting on a big round canvas, which I think worked really well. Here are some more studies I did. These are of Cityscapes by Dimitri Cavender. So I've been painting San Francisco a lot and it's just so hard to simplify the complex shapes of the city, but I really like how Dimitri manages to do that. He creates really simple shapes out of all the complex buildings that still give you a sense of the city and all of its complexity without actually um, describing all of it fully. I also really like his color palettes that he uses. I find them just really playful and, and joyful. Here's another study of a painting by Sainer Edom. Um, this was a landscape that they did and I really loved how they were playing with colors here and having that, the bright uh, patches of pink along with the more muted greens. And then here's another self-portrait. I kind of laughed at this one because I feel like uh, it came out a little bit like a, like a propaganda poster, <laughs> but, uh, but I think it's still fun and I really like the contrast of the the light that's hitting my nose, it's hitting my hair, it's hitting the side of my face, and I think it just creates these really cool shapes. And then here are two landscape studies of landscapes by Mark Dunford. Um, and here I really liked the color palettes that he was using. I just found these colors, like looking at the, the paintings of his, I just felt so peaceful and like this minty green I found to be so beautiful. Um, also the greens that he's finding in the landscape here with the little bits of purple as well. Um, yeah, it just is such a beautiful color palette and also the way he has simplified the shapes and composed the images. I think it works really well as like they work well as landscape paintings, but they also work well as abstract paintings. And then here's a plein air study I did while in Austin, Texas. It was the view from my hotel room. There's uh, the lake that we could see with the reflection of the clouds and then some, some trees and a little road. And here's another self-portrait. This one I wanted it to be kind of more dreamy, more nostalgic, so I'm using these uh, not too saturated pinks and purple colors, and I think it gave it a, a nice tone. Here's a little sketch of one of my houseplants. Um, I really liked the pink and green contrast between 
the leaves. Um, I thought that was just very beautiful. And I like the shapes that the patterns on the leaves created. And then here's another self-portrait drawing. So I've been trying to alternate between doing drawings and paintings so that I really keep up my drawing skills because I think um, like I love to paint and I think painting is my favorite thing, but I also love to draw and I feel like having strong drawing skills really helps in my paintings. Here are two little sketches of, that I did of my cat Luna. And here, once again, I'm kind of just focusing on the abstract shapes that her dark side and her light side make in the different positions that she's in. Um, I just think it's really fun and it, it creates a really interesting design and like moves your eye around the image in a cool way. And I also, I thought it would really look really nice to do her in kind of these cool colors and then have her on this bright coral background. I like the contrast. And then here are just some doodles I was doing of potential installation ideas. Here are two self-portraits. Um, I took a few photos to do a self-portrait painting and, um, and I liked these two. I wasn't sure uh, which one I liked more. So, and I wanted to make at least one painting. So I decided to draw them out first. I ended up turning this one into a painting as part of my 50 paintings in 50 days challenge. Um, this one I haven't painted, but I still like it. I might, I might still do it. But yeah, with these drawings, I was just focusing on uh, what are the major shapes in the painting that I could create and also where are the light and dark shapes. Here's a drawing of Banner Peak that I did while we were hiking in, um, it was the Mammoth Lakes area of California in the Sierras and it was just absolutely beautiful. So I was just trying to, um, trying to get the major shapes of the mountain. And then here's a sketch I did of Berad. This is from a photo, not from life. Um, I think I captured his likeness pretty well, but yeah, just trying to do it quickly, focusing on uh, light and shadow. And here's a self-portrait I did also from a photo. Um, and once again, looking at the major shadow shapes. Here's another, I just wanna do some figure drawing practice. It was based on a photo I found on Instagram. Um, and I thought it was cool, like the, the model had this translucent skirt on. So I thought it'd be fun to try to communicate that through drawing. And then here's another photo, I think also from Instagram. Um, and I loved the, the kind of bright overexposed feeling of light that was on her face and on her shirt. Um, so I wanted to try to communicate that in this drawing. Here are some more uh, drawings based on photos. I think these were from National Geographic photos. And yeah, these are also all about light and shadow. So it's just really figuring out where are the shadow shapes, where are the light shapes, and making clear decisions about where one starts and where the other one ends. And then here are just some doodles that I was doing with colors that, that I was really enjoying. Here is a drawing of, it's a famous artist, but I don't remember her name. Um, but this, I, I got the photo reference in a drawing, in a painting class I was doing with Nicolas Uribe, um, which was just really fun. And he had a whole bunch of uh, photo references of artists. And I just, I really liked her, um, her pose in this. I liked the way the light was hitting her face and also the contrast between her white shirt and her black, I guess it's like a sweater on top. Um, I thought it came together for a really beautiful image. And then here's a, another drawing I did of Berad um, based on a photo I took when we were on the plane <laughs> doing some plane sketching. Um, but the light from the window of the plane was coming in and hitting his face in a really beautiful way. Here's a sketch that I started, but I just really wasn't feeling it. This is when um, I went to Hawaii and did some sketching there, um, but I don't know, it wasn't my day. So I started it uh, and then I just gave up. And then later I did some plein air painting in Hanalei Bay. Um, so this is a painting I did while on the bay. It's cool, it still has a little bit of sand from the beach stuck in the paint. 
Um, but you can see the boats that were in the bay, and then you can see the beautiful hills that were right behind them, these like lush green hills um, with a lot of fog in the background. And I'm really happy also with how I got this shimmering effect on the water. I think that texture worked really well. Here is my first and so far only, but hopefully not last, a painting from a plein air expedition that I did. Basically, I went on a backpacking trip when we were in Kauai and, um, and I actually brought all my paints along and my sketchbook and I lugged it, I think it was like 11 miles all the way to the campsite. So while we were there, I was like, okay, I gotta paint <laughs> if I brought it all this way. So I painted the, the hillside that we could see from the, the beach at the campground. And then this is another plein air painting back at Hanalei Bay. This is, they had like a little pier that was coming out into the bay. Um, and once again, you have like the green hillsides behind it with a lot of fog. Here's just some doodles I was doing, playing around with different colors, kind of making a vaguely floral shapes. And then this one, I think this was just from a vintage photo that I saw. Um, but I really liked the dramatic lighting and shapes being created by the dress. This is back on Hanalei Bay. Um, and this is one of the few plein air paintings that I've done that actually kind of involves people. Um, although I did it just very, very lightly, but, um, but yeah, I, I liked the, the way the umbrella was catching the light and contrasting with the, the, pink cooler, you have the green umbrella and the pink cooler, and that attracted my eye. Um, and then I just wanted to convey the, the feeling of the beach scene. Here are just a bunch of other figure sketches I did based on photos I found online. Um, yeah, once again, focusing a lot on light and shadow. And then getting back to San Francisco, um, this is, I think it is, yeah, this was my very first uh, plein air nocturne or nightscape. So it was the first time that I went outside and painted from life at night. So I had a whole setup where I lit, um, I lit my sketchbook with a little reading light and I brought my paints and I painted this little shop um, that was in the city. And I, I tried to capture kind of the glow coming from inside the shop. It was really hard, but, um, but I think it came out with a cute painting. Here's another little cityscape sketch. And then here's a self-portrait, um, kind of playing with pattern and form here. So I wanted to convey some flatness in, um, in what I was wearing and then contrast that with more of the sense of form in my hair. And then here are two sketches. This is um, of me sitting with Luna. Um, and I just thought it was a kind of a cute pose. And then um, this is a sketch I did of Vera. This one is, is from life. Um, so I'm trying to practice a little bit more doing sketches from life. Um, and he was playing the ukulele. So, um, so while he was sitting there holding the pose or you know, kind of holding the pose <laughs> off and on. Um, I thought I would give it a try and draw him. Here are two other plein air nightscapes I did. These are from my neighborhood in Potrero Hill, um, but my light was not working. So I was trying to paint them while holding my cell phone light. And I think it came out pretty rough. Um, so I was a little, a little frustrated working on these, but, um, but still worth the effort and still a good learning experience. Here's a drawing of myself that I did, um, when I wasn't feeling well, and I just kind of wanted to convey, um, how I was feeling in that moment. And then here is an abstract painting I did that I, I wanted to play with this color palette and was kind of just putting shapes down. And I think it came out almost Brian Rutenberg-esque if you are familiar with that artist, which was not intentional, but, um, but I, I like it. I especially like this area here um, where you kind of have these like tree-like or trunk-like forms coming through in the light blue against the darker blue. 
And then here I'm going back to some master copies. So I did a lot of master copies earlier in this sketchbook, um, but then stopped for a while. And then I like to go back and forth between doing copies, doing more copies and doing fewer copies and kind of uh, implementing what I've learned from the copies. Um, but this is from John Dubrow. Um, it's a really beautiful painting of people hanging out at a park. And I just loved how he broke up the shapes in the space. I thought it was so beautiful and I love the vibrant greens. And then this is one of my favorite paintings by Mitchell Johnson. Um, and yeah, he is also a master of breaking up a complex environment into simple but beautiful shapes. And then here's the last sketch. This is based on a photo I found. I think it was from um, Ghana or, oh, I, I don't remember exactly which country it was from, but it was from, is like a 1950s photo of this woman. And I just loved her pose and her hair. I just thought her hair was fantastic. Um, and the way that the light was hitting her face was creating these beautiful shapes. So I thought it was a black and white photo, but I thought it would be really fun to do it in color and do it in this like really bright neon paint um, that I feel like was capturing the energy of her hair and kind of um, bringing in that, yeah, that sense of energy. And I really liked how the colors worked out and I ended up using this color, this same color palette on a larger painting. And yeah, so that's all my sketches. Um, my entire sketchbook from April of this year to November. Um, I hope you liked it. Thanks again for watching. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. And a huge thank you to my supporters on Patreon. I really, really appreciate you guys and you guys help make these videos happen. And if you like my art, if you like my videos and you wanna help me make more, please consider joining my Patreon at the link below. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.